Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today we're going to take a look at something of a bargain which I've found very recently from the Western Digital Recertified site, which is the Western Digital MyBook 4TB. As you can see, it says it on the box. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so today's video is, uh, yeah, this is going to be a little bit of an oddball one. We're going to go from various different tangents, but hey, what's new? This is Mike's Unboxing, but we do love a bargain. And this I found on UK Hot Deals, which is a site here in the UK for spotting excellent bargains all around the country. And somebody actually posted this for the Western Digital MyBook 4TB drive. It was coming up as £53.99. Now, this is August of 2020. If you go onto Amazon or pretty much any site at the moment and just do a search for Western Digital 4TB drive, either a red, a blue, that sort of thing, you're going to be paying at least £100. You might even end up paying that for one of those shingled magnetic drives, which is not a good thing. They are pretty awful and you don't want to use them. But with these recertified models, you can get a massive discount. Also, at the moment, if you actually register on their site and give your kind of username or email address, that kind of stuff, you can get a further 10%. So I think I paid around about £48 for this drive, which is absolutely phenomenal value for money, less than half price for what it is. But what the intention is with this, originally I was thinking, well, it'd be great for just doing some backups over USB 3. This has a rated speed of around about 175 megabytes read-write, which is absolutely fine for doing those sorts of things, transferring files, etc. But the real idea of this is to actually use this in my NAS drive. So in a moment, I've got a NAS, which I've managed to get recently from Synology, which is the DS220+, Plus, which uh, you can check out more about up here. In a moment, it's only got a two terabyte drive, which is basically a old Hitachi drive that I had knocking around, but I wanted to put a newer drive in it and something with a little bit more capacity than what we had. So when I saw this, I couldn't resist it. And also these boxes, the my books, are really well known for shucking. And if you're not sure what shucking is, uh, we'll put it on the screen here. But essentially what it means is taking the shell off a drive, especially these external drives, and just using the drive that's inside, basically throwing away the caddy because you don't really need it, and just taking advantage of the cost savings of the drive inside. It is quite a common thing that this does happen. Loads and loads of manufacturers do it. Silicon Power do it for sure, where you can buy a external USB drive, take out the drive and actually save yourself some money. It's a crazy thing. I don't know how it works, but it does. And it's great for us, the end users. You can save a few quid. Now this one actually comes with a white drive inside it, which is a little bit of a step down. It's basically the recertified version of the red drive. I have checked out the serial numbers, etc. already. I have had this out of the box, make sure it all works, etc., etc. And we don't have a shingle drive, which is fantastic. And it all works, which is even better. So anyway, let's take it out of the box, see what you get. So if you are going to use this as a USB backup drive, you know exactly what the deal is. So obviously, first of all, the packaging, I've actually had to write what it is on there. Western Digital, my book, 4TB, smiley face, because that's what it is. They basically recertify these drives. They don't put them in retail packaging. Again, that is part of the cost saving. And I'm quite happy with this. This could be recycled, chucked away, whatever, reused, used to send out another parcel. Absolutely fantastic. No waste. But what do we get inside of our package? Well, we don't actually get a great deal. The drive itself, which we'll take a look at shortly. And in this side, we've got our USB. So that is a USB 3.0 cable, uh, which terminates from A into a micro B connection. Also, we get a UK power brick with an adapter on, so you can actually swatch those out. So if you are in a different country, you've got the different style connectors there. You can just pop the end off and just put on the one which is suitable for your location. Also, there is a very, very small bit of documentation, which tells you how to switch out the plug heads. So yeah, that's all well and good. And yeah, that is pretty much it. So not much to recycle there. This is the cool part. So this is the actual drive itself. And again, if you are going to be using this just as a backup drive, I think these are really good. They've been around for a long time. And I remember selling these when they used to be 160 gigs. So yeah, things have moved on considerably. So that is the, the MyBook drive. There is a protective casing around the outside at the moment, which I haven't peeled off yet although I have taken pretty much everything else apart, but we'll go into that a little bit later. So on the front, Western Digital logo and the MyBook logo. Also at the front, there's a diagnostic LED, which is basically power on off, uh, data transfer activity, that kind of thing, which is a nice white LED, not too intrusive. And if you are gonna use this on your desk and maybe have it left on the side next to your laptop or whatever the case may be, it's gonna be absolutely fine. The drive inside is a 5400 RPM, so it's a relatively low 
rotation speed so it isn't going to cause any issues and actually on the bottom of the drive itself there's some really nice rubber feet which actually do tend to absorb any of those vibrations anyway the unit itself uh, not particularly heavy a little bit heavier than the bare drive itself there isn't really much there and it's mostly plastic anyway on the back you've got a kensington lock slot you've got your power input 12 volt dc and also the slot there for the usb connection so that is pretty much it and there's no power on off or anything like that literally when you turn your PC on, if the USB is connected, it'll wake the drive up, so you don't actually need a power switch. It's kind of auto-sensing and it will put itself to sleep, which is where actually some of the problems may lie if you are planning on shucking one of these units. Now, shucking, like we said, is basically taking the drive out and using it in another machine. So if you've got a slightly older machine with a power supply that supports the SATA 3.3 standard, or rather doesn't support it, this drive is unlikely to even power up. There is an extra pin, which basically prevents this drive from spinning up with older power supplies. So do bear that in mind. If you are working with a slightly older system or you've potentially got a cable which doesn't support that standard, then the drive is gonna be useless. Although there is a way around that, the third pin on the SATA connection, you can basically just blank it off with a little bit of tape and it disables that port. Also, you can get a Molex to SATA connector, which also gets around that problem. But anyway, that's a story for another day. Okay, so let's get into the real meat of this. This is the shucking part of it. Now, if you want to take one of these apart, obviously you do so at your own risk and it potentially could invalidate any warranty. Although there's a whole legal wrangle whether or not actually physically taking this apart invalidates the warranty because are you actually damaging the drive itself? Not really, you're damaging the external casing. But anyway, again, that is something else for another day. The right to repair, all those kinds of things exist, but essentially what I'm saying is if you do take it apart on your own head, be it. So with that said, let's get on with it. Now the easiest way to take these things apart without actually damaging it too bad, which I found out after the fact, because I kind of damaged it a little bit doing it, is to use four kind of guitar picks or these kind of screen things. You can also use a uh, credit card style thing, Ikea family for all your needs. You can just slot it in. So there's a very, very small gap on this top edge. And all you do is essentially kind of wiggle the card until you get in a little bit and as you move along you'll feel resistance so i think there's a tab about there so you leave that one in there you do the same there's four tabs essentially and you basically once you've got that gap there you can find the next tab which is kind of I think it's just there so you leave those in place and you do the same on the back basically slide it along until you find that part of resistance then you can leave those in place and you should then be able to slide the drive out so Let's try and do that now. It is a little bit, uh, a little bit tricky. Sometimes you might need an extra puck just to lever it out. But essentially, it's on a kind of almost like a rail system. So you can just twist it a little bit. You get to a certain point where you should be able to slide it out, uh, like so. So that is the outside edge. And once you take it out, you can actually see where those bits are, where the pucks or the spreaders, those kind of things, where they should be. So that's all well and good. So that and that gives us basically our drive. So looking at the drive, you've got the Western Digital, four terabyte. This is a white drive and the serial number, or rather the model number is WD40EZRZ. And the number below that, if you look at that on Western Digital site, or also there's another site which gives you hard drive information, you can type that in and it'll tell you what sort of drive you've got. So if you've picked up one of these and you've got a slightly different looking drive, you can see whether it's a shingle magnetic drive. If it is a shingle drive, then I would definitely not suggest using it in a NAS box. They're no good for that purpose at all, really. Uh, essentially, I'd send it back personally, but again, that is entirely up to you. And also it's luck of the draw. But anyway, so that is the drive exposed. Now to get the drive actually out, at first when you look at it, you think, oh wow, that is in there uh, pretty good. But it actually is really easy to take out. So there's some things you need to bear in mind. There is a plastic section here, which is essentially just an extension bar for the LED light. There's also this circuit board, and also there's four rubber mounting areas. So on the left-hand side, as we're looking at it now, with the power and the USB on the right-hand side, all you need to do is gently push the drive up from underneath, and it'll come off of those rails. And then you can just get it up past the lip of the plastic, and you can pull the whole thing out, leaving the frame intact. So there's no damage done to it whatsoever. Also then you've got these rubber mountings. So take off the rubber mountain off the end. Got four of these rubber mountings, which 
getting some nice and easy to do. You don't really do much damage to the device itself by doing this, so it is a really good way of doing it. If you're not very confident, then maybe not the thing for you, but it's actually relatively straightforward. And we'll need a cross-headed screwdriver just to remove the circuit board for the USB from the drive itself. And that's just held on with one single cross-headed screw. So take that out, put it to one side, and then you can just wiggle that part out. I would remove this plastic bar first of all. This is just pushed into place, actually in the screw hole, which you can probably just about see, and then pull that plastic part out and put it to one side. And then the SATA part at the bottom, you can essentially just wiggle it off. And that takes that part off of it. And then that exposes the normal SATA and power connections, which hopefully you can see pretty well. Next thing to do is to remove these end pieces. They're actually on Torx, but generally, if you get a small enough flat-headed screwdriver, you can just stiff it in there and unscrew it. So that's coming out nicely. And you can just unscrew those pillars. I would suggest, obviously, depending on what your use of this drive is, keep all these bits safe somewhere, just in case you do need to do any kind of RMA or returns, that kind of thing, at least for a couple of weeks anyway, until you know that the drive's absolutely fine to settle down. But there we go. Ultimately, that is what we're left with. We're left with our Western Digital 4 terabyte drive. This is, again, the white version. So 5,400 RPM. It's got 256 meg cache, which is excellent. Some of the drives only come with 128 or even 64 meg. So this is a really good cache. Ideally, this is really suitable to go inside of a NAS, whereas normally you'd spend, like I said, double that amount. So for a little bit of work and breaking possibly a little bit of plastic, I think this is a fantastic value for money. Again, I'll put links to the Western Digital uh, refurbished or whatever it is, recycled uh, center. I'll leave links for that in the video description below. If you're planning on doing this, uh, do let me know in the comments. And if you've already done it and you've one of those things you keep on doing because you do save so much money, again, let us know in the comments. We'd love to hear it. But there we go, that has been the, uh, well, it was the my book from Western Digital, the four terabyte version. I've been Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and I too, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.